What's up YouTube? I'm an average dad and today we're gonna build the best litter box ever. <laughs> but seriously, I don't know if that's too much of an exaggeration because by the time it's all said and done, it's gonna be pretty darn cool. You may be asking yourself, how can a litter box be cool? Well, if you have a cat, you know that the litter box is the worst part of owning a cat. Minus the fact that you also own a cat. They smell terrible, litter gets tracked everywhere. Our old house, we had laminate floors most places, so it just felt like you were walking on the beach after a few days. So to solve that, this is the solution I came up with. There's essentially a base cabinet with the litter box inside. To access it, Taz would jump through a hole in the side onto kind of an upper level catwalk have to go around the corner and he could jump down into his box and then reverse that to get out. The cool thing about the catwalk shelf was that it was made out of egg crate, uh, which looks kind of like a ceiling light diffuser, kind of a grid pattern. So it had a bunch of square holes in it. So when he jumped from the litter box up onto that shelf, a lot of the litter would come out of his paws and then drop right back down into the box. Reduced litter tracking by probably I don't know, 80 or 90%. It was really awesome. So now in our new house with baby on all three rooms upstairs, potentially have people sleeping in them, losing the office, which will now be the nursery. Today, we're going to hide it away in one of the closets, but give Taz access through a hole that will go into the hallway and then use that same strategy to reduce litter tracking. And you know, as dad say, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So we are going to add a fan, have it automatically vent to the attic whenever he goes to the bathroom as well as throw in some sweet LED lights. So let's get to it. This? This? Is where we plan to put the new litter box entry. Oh, there's that darn kit. This is the hallway wall that will have a hole cut out for him to enter into the box that will be hidden in the closet here. When I was measuring out the area for the new litter box, I realized that the closet wall did not go all the way to the hallway. So I cut a small hole to confirm that and then found that there was some dead space that I could work in. So we'll now cut out that sheet rock so I can access that and have the box not take up so much of the closet. Here you can see the dead space between the hallway and the closet. So I have about 10 or 12 inches extra to work with there. And it was about this part in that I realized the project was gonna take much longer than I anticipated, but I hate patching drywall. So there's only one way forward now. Now that the drywall is all cut out, I framed the opening from the hallway into the box, as well as both sides with some two x four scraps I had in the garage. Here, I'm just screwing in the last uh, two x four addition to the framing and uh, what that's attached, I will go ahead and be able to start uh, putting in the drywall. Nope. Now that the drywall is secure on that back face, I can cut out the litter box side entry hole. All right, all right, all right. I won't worry about these exposed drywall edges as they'll be covered by trim in a few steps. Cut the top so it would just rest on the other two pieces. And now the last space with a piece of drywall that was green because that is what the prior owners had left in the garage. So now the portion of the litter box in that dead space is framed and sheetrock. And before you go down in the comments and kindly let me know that I should have covered these exposed sheetrock edges, Taz has promised me that he will not lick the sheetrock, so it's fine, just relax. Next, I need to make the walkway supports. Uh, to do this, I'm also using just some leftover plywood in the garage and ripping that into smaller pieces. As I attach this first support, I'll use a small piece of that uh, walkway material so I can see kind of how high it'll sit uh, and then a level to make sure it's nice and flat. Now we can just test fit the egg crate material to see how we're looking and we are looking pretty good. Oh, there's that cat. If you like cats, you should like this video. 
Anyway, now I'll create the uh, crossbar supports for the egg crate material that I'll actually sit on. Here I've glued this uh, first piece and let it dry. And then now I'll put a screw in just to make sure uh, it's super strong. I'm screwing into plywood, so I'll go ahead and do two pilot holes, slowly make it bigger uh, to make sure that it doesn't split and then put in my wood screw. So now that piece is done, looking good. So I'll go ahead and do that again for the next port. And on this one, I just glued and screwed it at the same time. In order for this to be somewhat easy to take apart, I'm gonna go ahead and just attach a couple supports that the uh, crossbar is just going to rest on top of. So you can see here, we just need one more on the door frame and then one more on the wall on the right. Now we got both of those in and we are looking pretty, pretty level. Only the best for Taz. Now I'll test fit that egg crate material again to see how it's looking and go ahead and start cutting the hole for Taz to jump down into the box through. We'll get back to this in a sec. Now it's time to cut the entry hole on the hallway side. So I'll go ahead and mark this and score it with a utility knife and then knock it out. The drywall edges on the box opening will be covered by trim, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and paint these exposed two by fours. Now I'm gonna install these trim pieces. These are expanded foam that you can find at your local hardware store in the exterior trim section. They're paintable, but for me, this white just works perfectly, so I'm gonna cut them so it's a pretty snug fit and go ahead and install them. So this is how the hallway entry is looking with all these trim pieces installed. Now we'll install the dividing wall on the inside to make sure Taz goes the long way around because he is super lazy. Now I got the egg crate piece back in with the hole cut. So you can see how that fits on top of the crossbars. And then the view from underneath where all the litter will fall through those holes. And then here you can see I went ahead and framed out the edge. So I'll have a top, front, and side piece that will totally close this off to the rest of the closet. To close off the box from the rest of the closet, I'm using this eighth inch flooring plywood. If I did it again, I'd probably use a little bit thicker plywood that holds its shape better. This one bent pretty easy and warped a little bit after I painted it. I did go ahead and paint all those side pieces white to make it look a little bit more profesh. So the larger side piece that's walled off in the closet, I'm gonna make the bottom piece removable so I can remove it and then slide out the litter box and scoop. And the top piece is gonna be hinged so that it can hinge open and allow access to the box as needed. I don't have an angle grinder, uh, so it was super lazy for this portion and just cut some pieces of foam to cover up the back of those screws that were a little too long. So now all three of the interior faces are walled off with the painted plywood. You can see this top portion kind of gets pushed over that screw head and will hinge up. And then has three magnets on the top that'll interact with the bottom half, just like this. Here's the final product, that top piece removed. So you can see I zip tied the egg crate to the support bars to keep it from moving. And on the bottom, I use some foil tape and then some duct tape extensions to help keep the litter in when he digs around. So to scoop then, you'll remove this bottom panel and those magnets are oh so satisfying. So you'll go ahead and remove that and slide the litter box out and have it on top of some rails that were on the wall for hanging shelves and scoop and then go ahead and slide it back in. Now it is time for the important question of how will Taz take to the new litter box? So we'll go ahead and take off the cover head on it, put a treat in, and see how curious he is. And he uh, wanted the treat, but was not curious enough to jump in, so figured out he could just kind of pull it close enough to grab. Unfortunately. Get in there right now or I'm gonna lose it! So I had to resolve to take a little bit more of a direct approach. Has wandered to the back but didn't jump down into the actual box, he just came back to the entry. It took a couple days but Taz finally came around to using this new box. 